2003, when it was reported we were starting to work on launching a razor. That took five years because of the patents involved in it and IP issues and many other areas that we had to overcome. And because they knew I had the confidence in doing it, and I'm a common sense guy, I'd set the business up with no money, um, I'd built it up from scratch in a market with a product that had sold over the years in increasing quantities, that there was a common sense about me. I, I wasn't going to talk about doing something I was never going to do. And people like that. That's a mixture of humility, but you're going to get to where you believe you can get to. The community piece, I'll come on at the end, that's really about what's going on in the digital world now, the communities that are springing up that are very important to getting word out about your brand, whether it's via a Facebook fan page, whether it's via people following you on Twitter, whether it's using YouTube as a how to do things TV channel, because that's all YouTube essentially is, it's a TV channel. Facebook is a community where things are discussed. Twitter is a news alert system for letting people know what's going to be current, what's coming on the stream. Um, that community space, again, very important and free, which is very good at the moment. And E is um, enthuse, exceed, enjoy, which is a little motto that I've had for me as Will for the past um, ten, probably 10, 12 years. Um, wrote it on the back of my business cards. Enthuse about what you're doing. I enjoy it. Exceed at it i.e. be the best you can be, and, and enjoy. And if you're not enjoying what you're doing, whether you're working for a business or whether you're running a business or whether you're thinking about a business, if you don't enjoy it in the same way with a personal relationship, if you're not enjoying it, it probably isn't going to work. And you'd be amazed by the number of people I meet who said, oh, I really wish I did what you did. I really wish I enjoyed my job. I'd really like to. And half of me wants to say, well, you can do it. It's a bit tough, but you can do it. And, other, and you know, otherwise people just say, you know, I'll just carry on doing the same old, same old. And I think what Sage are doing here, where they're taking out their brand into their consumer market space, telling people about what Sage is about as a brand over and above the product that it is, is very important. And clearly, they're trying to project what they're doing in their particular industry space. So infuse, exceed, and enjoy. Um, a brief word on digital dialogue. I'm talking increasingly about this at quite a lot of events because we've always embraced at King of Shaves new stuff as it comes down the track. In 94, 95, I started seeing adverts running with um, www.firstdirect.co.uk on them and wondered what that was. And of course, that's what's known as a TLD, a top level domain, a, 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 a home for your business on the internet. And um, I bought shave.com for $35 in 1995. And we were offered $2 million for it in 1999 at the height of the dot com version one boom. And via that TLD, that top level domain, which allows people to interact with your brand by visiting your home. What's now happening with the internet is people are now living in cities of content. So we're now spending more time at facebook.com slash king of shaves, twitter.com slash king of shaves, and youtube.com slash king of shaves. That's not to say that the importance of owning, let's say, sage.co.uk or sage.com isn't valuable. Of course it is. It allows you to tell people exactly what it is you're about from your perspective. It's what's called brand broadcast. However, to get traction with consumers, you need to be getting into the area of digital dialogue. I, them talking about you, you talking about what you're doing for them, and getting involved in that conversation i.e. this whole word of mouth area, but it needs the word of mouth to start it off. The pub conversation, the discussion about why King of Shaves is this and its competitors are that. Um, content's king, so if you do do the Twitter thing, just don't bang on about meaningless stuff that people really don't care about because it's cluttering up their already busy day with more clutter. Um, but if you do have insight into market trends, you've been told about an article that's interesting. Um, there's a very funny YouTube viral doing the rounds for Tipex, 
called Don't Shoot the Bear, which is really funny if you go and see it. Very clever how it's been done for Tipex, you know, as sort of a really quite old-fashioned brand. And it's embraced this whole area of digital very, very cleverly. Um, so content, if you're going to talk, talk about stuff which is worth people hearing about, not just what coffee you've had and where and why and what you're doing later. Um, the digital dialogue versus brand broadcast piece, um, that really is all about if you have a big company, you've got lots of money, you then do lots of TV advertising, telling people how great you are, that's brand broadcast. What digital dialogue is, is having other people talk about how great your brand is and starting to love your brand, and that's free. And that's a level playing field. And because it's a level playing field, it's great for challenger brands to live in, because you get consumer to consumer interaction, C to C. You get consumer to celebrity interaction, a lot of celebrities on Twitter. So when Don Jolly was looking for a razor recently, he tweeted that out. About half a dozen King of Shays followers tweeted him back saying, why don't you get in contact with Will King? He tweeted me, and I then sent him a razor, and he then thanked me for that. And that was regular people seeing somebody who they knew, asking about a product, and then re recommending that to it. And that's fantastic. And that's obviously the, or almost the flip of celebrity endorsement, i.e. David Beckham for Gillette telling you it's the best a man can get. And I love that. That's very zag. And that's very interesting space to be in. And then I'm um, obviously the celebrity consumer. But remember, in the whole digital space, it can be good or bad. If somebody is critical of your brand or product or service, or is praiseworthy of it, you, the worst thing you can do if somebody tells you off or criticizes you is to get involved in a, an interaction with them um, about why they think it's good or bad. You need to find out why they think it's good or bad, and then reward them or help them or resolve the matter. And um, there's some interesting, very interesting case studies out there at the moment as to how that's worked, um, especially with regard to what Domino's Pizza did with the CEO of Domino's in the US after an employee was filmed doing something unsavory to a pizza and how they turned that around to Domino the brand's advantage. Um, any digital dialogue, it needs a publicity point. So Susan Boyle would not be the multimillionaire she now is had she not had the publicity point of, um, I think it was Britain's Got Talent, um, and then the jaw drop of Amanda Holden that being caught on YouTube, served worldwide, and then she ends up on Oprah. And what social media is all about, it's about amplification. It's about taking something and then massively amplifying it. But if you don't have anything to start with, there's no publicity point, you then can't amplify anything. So think carefully about what you're talking about and how that might be amplified. And um, finally, in my opinion, although not in the opinion of a journalist at the FT who I read yesterday, who was very critical of sort of what Twitter's all about and stuff and why it's a waste of time for middle management or any management to be doing Twittering completely pointless, I would completely and 100% disagree with that. You can get into a direct um, conversation with people on a global basis about what it is you're doing and why, or on a local basis, or on a national basis. And if you're smart about writing a blog, which might take an hour or so a week, um, doing a Facebook fan page for your business, telling people about what you're doing, and maybe geotagging yourself using an app called Foursquare, that sort of basically tells people where you are and what you're doing. So I sent out via Foursquare, I was at Sage World this morning. And then people then retweet that and say, OK, King of Shaves at Sage World in Telford, I might be traveling locally, I'll drop in and hear what's, see what's going on here. Very, very important. And um, obviously, be alert as to what's coming next. And then um, just finally, how King of Shaves, the company, is structured. It's sort of a wheel, because wheels have momentum and keep rolling somewhere, hopefully somewhere good. Um, I'm the axle in the middle. And I input into um, what's called smarketing, which is a hybrid of sales and marketing, um, brand innovation, brand innovation, um, Perdos, which is pounds, euros, and dollars, um, i.e. money, finance stuff, and props, which is production and operations. And you'll see that there are four people there in addition to myself in the center. Um, one guy straddles brand innovation and props, i.e. what we're thinking up of launching can actually be made. That's quite sensible. Another guy straddles the whole brand innovation sales and marketing piece, i.e. what we're thinking about can be made